So uh, the NXT show opened up with the pretty deadly diamond mine non-title match. And uh, what happened at the end is uh, the Creeds run out and uh, they essentially try to uh, help Roddy. But uh, it ends up backfiring, get knocked off the apron and uh, Strong ends up getting hit and pinned for the three count. And uh, later Strong argues, I could have won by DQ. At least it would have been a win. And Roddy had told them to stay in the back, but they did go out there and actually help him And uh, when he was in peril. It's not like they went out there and gunked it up. It was, uh, yeah, so there was that part of that story, too, with Roddy looking like he may be splitting up the diamond mind. Well, he said, if you guys don't win the tag titles on Saturday, you are out of diamond mind. Now, listen, I don't know what's going to happen on uh, Saturday. I have no idea. But I do know that the Creed's, had been under the impression of maybe a few times, at least once, and I think actually more than once, that they were going to be winning the tag team titles and it didn't happen. So my guess is they're winning the tag team titles coming up at the uh, at the show. We had the segment sit-down challenge for Escobar and uh, Tony D'Angelo's crew. Ugh. I mean, I kind of like them. I don't know why. Dude, this whole thing, I mean... Let's let's take a little drive on the boat. <laughs> it's like if you're going to have a meeting on a boat, you do it at the dock. You don't take a, a leisurely cruise up and down unless you plan on killing somebody and dumping them over the side of the boat, which did not happen. And instead, we have this completely ridiculous. And I I'm cool if you like this, but this is so bad. And it's not even it's not even bad enough to be good, in my opinion. It's just bad. It's corny. It's goofy. And Tony D'Angelo wrestling uh, Phantasmo, you know, doesn't bother me at all. But, like, <laughs> the, the thought of seeing two dimes and stacks, you know, being wasted against uh, Cruz, and I just, I don't know. That whole thing, Legato has been so screwed up there. And, and Electra Lopez, and I know we're going to get to her, a second-generation wrestler and everything. Her father is Steve King. She's been doing this for a long time now. And I know they like her look, and she does have a presence with that group when she's standing next to them. But, man, maybe she should just have a presence more and, and not worry about the wrestling aspect. Cora Jade and Electra Lopez. This was not good. This was not good. And uh, Cora Jade won. You ever seen, like, a, a seated drop kick? Where, like, yeah. essentially you just run and you, you take a bump and then your feet hit the person and they take a bump? Not Electra Lopez. Like she kicked Cora Jade so hard on this move. I was like, God. And then they had some spot where they were trying to get through the ropes, and it was in, not good. No. Not good. Uh, then we had a, the Sangha segment where he gave a pep talk to uh, Wes Lee. I like this Sangha. We had a great vignette for uh, the former Roxy talking about growing up and wanting to be a WWE superstar. And they had all of this footage of her when she was a little girl. They had video footage. They had photos. I've heard all these WWE events, meeting the wrestlers, and talked about driving 10 hours both ways to train with Booker T. And it was a great what? video. Wants to grow up and be a great WWE superstar like Nikki Bella. Who was her other inspiration, her first one? I don't remember. But it was like Nikki and AJ, and they had clips Paige. of her Paige. meeting. Yeah, Paige and Naomi. Uh, so, uh, Wesley beat Zion Quinn with a cradle. The very first spot they did, they almost screwed up. Wesley is is great. Uh, Zion Quinn needs a lot of work. But he's tall and handsome. So you'll be seeing him on the main roster at any moment. Horrible, horrific Joe Gacy promo. <laughs> then we had a backstage promo with Braun Breaker, where uh, there's this crazy laughing ass act all scared. But then he gets all tough and he gets mad. And he's about to smash a TV when he realizes, Oh, wait. If I do this, I'll be DQ'd. And so he calmly puts the television down. And I'm like, do you idiots know what a go-home show is all about? On the go-home show, the guy should get mad and smash the TV. So you think, oh, man, I hope he doesn't do this. Well, actually, it's like the whole... When I say that, but like the idea that, hey, here's the stipulation. The guy you like could get screwed. So get your ticket now. But I mean, if you're going to do that, then you should do an angle where the guy's all angry on the go-home show. Instead, he proves, oh, I'm not going to get angry. I won't get DQ'd. It's like, <laughs> what? 
Tuesday night, the performance center turns into just like some wacky fun house where you never know what's going to happen in each room. Like over here, Toxic Attraction's got like some, you know, some things set up here. Wendy Chu's got a bedroom set up like some girl or something like that, some teenage girl. And then in this room, the lights are just going to go crazy. Mackenzie Mitchell's just, just going to slide out of the shot while the camera shakes and the lights go crazy. And then Braun recognizes that he can't smash this monitor, and then she just comes sliding back in again, just like nothing happened. Weird place at NXT. We had this NXT Women's Championship Summit. Oh, God. Oh, my God. So Oh, Lord. It was almost so bad it was good, but it wasn't. It was so bad it was bad. Especially Wendy Chu just screaming at her to sign the contract over and over again. But that's what I think. At least she was speaking for the people because everybody else trying well, to Well, she talk. was, but she said it in such an irritating manner that it was like, Ooh. are you supposed to be a baby face or a heel? Dude, look at the promo that was coming from Katana Chance and, and what's her name? Uh, yeah, this was horrible. It was all bad. And then Chu, uh, I guess, hits a spit wad. Yes. On Mandy Rose. Out of a straw, a spitball. Yes. Breaks down into a fight. It was it was horrible. I actually liked Ivy Nile, uh, the promo she cut on Keanu James. It's weird because, like, Ivy Nile is, uh, she's, she she's a very wooden promo, but uh, but somehow she pulls it off. You know, some some humans are wooden. You know what I mean? So I never feel like she's just bad at doing promos. I just feel like that's who this Ivy Nile is. Like, that's her normal delivery in everyday life. So it doesn't bother me as much as other wooden promos do. But she did push her into a locker and cut a promo. I thought she had, you know, for being wooden, I thought it was actually a very good wooden delivery. She kind of comes off like a, uh, uh, I don't know how to describe it really. Like, you know, when you see someone, it's just like, they don't have a lot of emotion, so it's kind of scary. You know who she like, could be modeled Nile. after? And, and I hope somebody that could help her? Beth Phoenix who actually had a lot more charisma, a lot more, I think, self-confidence, uh, you know, of, of being a wrestler, obviously, once we saw her debut on Raw or wherever it was that we saw her debut for WWE. But that's where I think Ivy Nile, that's somebody who, that should be kind of the inspiration there and kind of work her along that way. She's got such a great presence, such a good look. And with the creeds, you know, it makes sense. If they could find who she is, her as kind of the mouthpiece and being the person that drives the creeds, if they later on decide to break up Diamond Mine, I think is a good idea. Solo Sokoa beat Duke Hudson, just uh, hit him with a splash and everything like that. And then the last thing I saw was uh, the Thea Hale segment where <laughs> they have they have video from her high school graduation, and so she's weird. getting her diploma. Ah, She's all happy, and they've got pictures with all of her other friends and everything like that. And then, uh, and then she's at a desk virtually exactly like I'm at right now with one mic. And she's got three hats from three different colleges. And she announces that she's about to go. I don't remember where she said. Notre Dame. And then, like, the hat doesn't fit. She goes, this don't feel right. And she pushes all of the hats off the table and announces, I'm going to chase you. And they cut backstage to this tiny little room. <laughs> there's like nine geeks in there. And they're all, yeah, they're going like this. And they cut back to uh, whatever name is Thea Hale. She's going, yeah, she's doing a dance. It was so <laughs> campy. It was preposterous. But I liked it. Yeah, I, I didn't like that one as much as you did, but I thought it was... It was it so was, stupid. It, was it wasn't so, even that trying was, not to be stupid. That's the, That was stupid enough to be funny, and that was stupid enough to be good. So I, that was pretty much it, other than you did miss another vignette for Giovanni uh, Vinci. Oh, yeah, this guy. Yes. Who is, by the way, Giovanni Vinci? I don't know, but I'm about to sneeze. As we wait and anticipate. Take over the damn if, show! I am. I'm right now. I'm doing a dramatic, uh, see if he sneezes. He's got his hand over his nose right now. He's starting. He's looking all like right. he's going to choke. No, I'm good. All right. So anyway, that's all I saw from NXT 2.0, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> well, then there was Cameron, Cameron Grimes and Nathan Frazier. And again, Cameron Grimes got the victory there. I would love to see more out of those guys. And before Cameron Grimes got beat up by Trick and... Uh, and Carmelo, he ended up escaping, so he ends up standing there uh, tall and is, was able to survive uh, before his uh, North American title match coming up on this premium live event Saturday. Yeah, Vinny's driven all the way here, and his camera's now working. Oh, cool. Classic. It's pointing at the back of the TV. All Riveting. right, yep, we go that way. Uh, nope, uh, wrong way, bro. 180 degrees oh. the wrong way. Oh. Yep. 
We don't need two cameras on me. Hey, hey, there he is. By the way, you need a good nose hair trimming. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.